What's going on, everybody? We're back with a second episode of the podcast. Today, we have somebody that I consider a very close friend, uh, someone who's been a mentor to me and a friend. His name is Neeks, and he will be joining shortly. Let's wait for him. Good. What's up, man? I think you're connecting. You, let's see. Are you muted? Oh, it's connecting. Okay. All right, never mind. We good now, bro. What's up, man? What's up with you, Brody? How are you? I'm big chilling. I'm trying to find a good spot to put my phone in. Have you ever done something like this? Huh? Have you ever done something like this? What? Like a video like interview? Zoom? Or like an interview? Matter of fact, I've did a... Uh... I've did some interviews before, but nothing, nothing live, nothing video, nothing yeah. like that. I guess, uh, no. Nice. So it was the first time. Uh, I got a couple of questions for you that I wanted to ask, and we can just go deeper and, you know, just talk about that. Is that cool? Yeah, bro. You know what I'm about. Come on. All right. Um, you want to flip your phone like this way, so it's like full screen? Yeah, I got you. Oh, good. My bad. <laughs> How you go? You're good. So why don't you introduce yourself? Uh. My name is Neeks. I'm an artist coming out of the county. You know what I mean? Going all the way across the nation now. Going to Orlando, trying to turn shit up a little bit. Stuff up a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. you already know, man. Most of the people who watch this stream going to know who the boy Neeks is because Tasty puts on for me so heavy. So I uh, appreciate you, man. So I'm going to definitely boost you oh, a little bit on this podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm Neeks. I'm an engineer, artist, and a producer. Mm -hmm. so I'm and uh, we are here to make things make things hit. I saw. Very talented engineer, producer, artist. I was just listening to um, "Next Up" by Kid Bane featuring you and your verse went crazy. Really good, really good flow. I appreciate that, man. Kid Bane's one of he's like my artist. He's one of the projects I had like earlier in my uh, career. I started like trying to look out for him and like. Mm -hmm. Uh, place him around a little bit just like to look out because he I saw that he definitely had potential like he had he had a space and he had an idea of where he wanted to be at and I was like you know what yeah. like let me, let me boost him a little bit let me help him out so I still like I still give him features and shit I plug him up a little bit Sweet. um oh, how are you, yeah, you like that? what I said you like that record it was good all your records bro oh, my God. <laughs> All right, bro. So, um, so first off, like, who inspired you to start music? Like, what artists? What people? What songs? Well, music. I started music about six years ago, mm -hmm. and I, I started music not through any type of rap at all. Uh, I started music with like just production. I started working on Ableton, and I, I wasn't even really devoted to like a specific type of music. I was more so just producing like dance music or like anything like I, I could really do but mostly dance like like club club stuff that I could like like turn up to with my guys in middle school like that's really what it was like but eventually uh actually matter of fact I do want to mention somebody that did influence uh me at that time a lot which his name is Joshua Moonshine he was an artist who used to do like spray painting on the wobble boardwalk and he put me on the music he said yo you got to start making your own music so you can spray paint to the music that you yeah. make. Cool. Like, yeah, that would be tough. Like, you're right. So he got me, he had me working all summer. I made enough money. I bought this uh, laptop. It was like a, a Mac, like an older Mac, but it had all this stuff on it. Yeah. Like Ableton and, and, and all the software I needed and I bought it. And then uh, it just went up from there. So he, he was a big inspiration, like, because he had a whole studio at this time, like like $100,000 studio. With all this, like, it was a production studio, not a recording studio, but like, he had it all set up at that time, so that, that definitely was inspirational for me. It set me in the right, yeah. the right place at the time. You got, you got, uh, stole my life after that music, for real, for real. Absolutely, dude. Crazy. But, you know, I mean, besides Josh, there was a couple other people that were influential earlier in my career. Um, I, one of the big people that boosted me was Lil Haiti. You already know Lil Haiti. Uh, when I was first getting the to understand mixing and engineering. Yeah. Uh, I was engineering Haiti songs and like they were going crazy and I was starting to realize like that I that I had potential like as far as an engineer, not just a producer and an artist. Like I could be in the studio making 
real official records, like with, with pro sound and everything for, for radio hits without, you know, a whole studio. I, all I got is what I got. And I had a song that hit 10 million streams mixed in here. Awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, you were definitely a person that, that uh, was very influential in my career. So I appreciate all the help that you gave me. Yeah, man, I appreciate you saying that. Cause for real, for that, so so I can really ask for being here. Like that, I, that I inspire other people to sure. To love to do yeah, stuff like. That. Yeah, I mean, you stop working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you doing your own thing. I, I fuck. I, I like it. I like to see it. You taught me a lot of stuff, mixing and the industry and mindset and everything. So very influential person. I don't know if you noticed it, but it's the little things. Bro, I, I love to be able to help, bro. So like I said, I appreciate that a lot that you said that because, you know, I, I believe one day if you work hard enough, everybody's going to be where they want to be at. So, exactly, yeah. So, you know, if I can help you get there. Yeah. Then. Yeah, that's why I wanted to get you in on the podcast episode. Like, you, the, you got the millionaire mindset. Like, that's the name. So, like, bro. All I think about is money, bro. Every day when I wake up, I think about getting a million dollars. That's awesome. Like when I go to sleep, I think about getting a million dollars. Like uh, that sounds greedy as hell, but yeah. it's not. Like yeah, everybody does it. Absolutely. Just focus. I yeah. need to get ready. I need to get up. Like. Sure. All right. Um. Next. So, like, you already mentioned Joshua and Haiti. Were they like your only mentors, or did you have like other ones? I wouldn't say I had any other mentors. I had like people that like influenced my uh, my career a lot. I had, you know, like I, I worked a lot with Jersey like when I first started. Like yeah. uh, me and him, pretty much did everything together for like the first year of like my my music career. Like, and that was dope. Like we we definitely like made some hit songs and like yeah uh, influenced each other a lot. Yeah. But, um. Hold on, my bad. Someone called. Me. Oh, sorry. Uh, I also had another person that was really influential for me was uh the bull Ferrari car. You already know Ferrari. It's because oh. uh he's been around for a minute now. Like he's he's taught me a lot. He's older than me, and like he put me in yeah. a lot of like situations where I had like you know what I mean grow up a little bit. So absolutely. Yeah. And um, going back to you in Jersey, I got my Spotify list up. So like all time songs, number one, Paparazzi by Neeks and Drizzy. Uh-huh. You already know. Number three, Weekday, Neeks and Drizzy. Number eight, Bet On Me, Neeks. Mm. Mm. Number 20, Password, Neeks and Drizzy. You really like them old records. And yeah, dude, I mean, yeah, I like the old records a lot. I listen, Paparazzi is still one of my favorite songs to date, to be honest, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that song, isn't that song off of streaming services? It's gone, right? And is it really? Because I was looking up, I was looking it up and I couldn't really find it. I, I, I think I removed that EP. Really? Yeah, I removed that, that last EP that me and Jersey dropped because that it wasn't as good as status in my mind. Status was the hottest shit. Me and Jersey the status was good on a low and earth. Yeah, I was literally, it was like literally like three days ago. I was listening to like, I literally was listening to Stay Awake and I like, I got chills because like that was like the time when I first met you and like, um, added up, added up edition. And uh, yeah, that's some old stuff right there. Like, Get That's mine, my little Trilla. Yeah. Get mine. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Little Trilla was just here last night. I was just with Trilla. That's awesome, dude. I'm definitely trying to get a session in. But got yeah. you, man. So, uh, so like as far as support goes, like is your family supportive of what you do? Like parents, siblings? Yeah. Um, family took time. Like it took a lot of like, you know what I mean? Them realizing that. Uh, that this is really serious, like it's not some kind of, you know what I mean? It's not some kind of joke. But at first, I, no, nah, I didn't have all my family support. Like the family support came when I already started being a little bit, like when I was being successful. Like when my family knew that I was like, and I love my family, like don't get me wrong, but like, I mean, come on, let's be real. Like when you see somebody like us trying to be a rapper or something like that, like off the rip, it doesn't look like, it's it's right it's real you know what I mean like that's just how it is but I started making money I, and I really was around like like the, the the people that my family already understood to be popping so like that 
influenced their mind. I, I, they now understand. Like, at my grad party, I don't know if you saw, but I performed in front of my whole family. Oh, that was yours? Okay. Yeah, that was my grad party. I performed in front of all the, my, like, older family, my young, everything. And it was, uh, it was explicit, too. Like, the whole <laughs> thing. Like, but it was really just because um, I wanted them to see, like, really what it's about. Like, this is, like, this is my art, this is my art form. Like, this is everything. I'm about to go to school for this. Like, this is what my life's about to be like. So, like, don't think that when I come around you, like, it's going to be different. Like, I'm, this is how I am. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I got you, dude. But, I got you. But they do support now. Like, they heavy support. Like, and at first, I, I can't even say I was good. So, like, I can't blame them for not, you know what I mean, supporting me. But, like, I'm, I'm glad I got up and uh, got to it a little bit so that now they can see the vision a little bit more clearly. That's awesome, dude. I'm really happy to hear that. I'm still working on the uh, familial support and the school support as well. But, you know, I'm, I'm making a name for a little bit more. I'm starting to do like studio sessions a little bit. So I was telling you about that on FaceTime. But yeah. Yeah, bro. You gotta keep doing it. You gotta keep doing stuff like that. Right. That's gonna get you uh spend money. Yeah, some money getting your bag a little bit. Get, get, um, get up. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you like what are you doing in Orlando? Like what's your what are you trying to accomplish down there? Who are you with? Like what's up? So in Orlando, I have a couple things lined up. Uh, I got school lined up, which is like, I'm going out to full sale for two years. So okay. uh, it's a recording school, or it's it's a school for all types of entertainment and media and shit like that. But uh, they have recording arts, which is what I'm going for. They have production, music production, and then they have like videography and they have like music business. They have a bunch of different courses, like all like real in-depth in -depth stuff and like, I'm going there for a two-year uh, accelerated program so that I'll get my bachelor's degree in two years. Okay. And I, so I'm going out there to just to really network with the school because uh, as I understand it, like there's a lot of, uh, uh, how do I say, like high, like high level industry, like producers and like engineers and like people all around in that school. So, you know, going there and so just getting your face out and around might be a good, uh, yeah. But besides that, I have, you already know, I have my guys out in Orlando. I got Ravage and Desmond. I got a couple other folks that stay out there that I'm, I'm trying to get some work in with and, you know, turn up a little bit for the next two years. How's that that um, studio session in Orlando? Uh, which one? Yeah. You said you had your first session in Orlando when we were on FaceTime. Yeah, I had my first, uh, I had my first session that I recorded in my crib in Orlando. And, oh, okay, uh, it was yeah. good. Yeah. It went well. I I did studio. I did some other studio stuff in Orlando. I went to this this crazy studio. It had like it was real expensive, like pricey, like crazy studio. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, honestly, I was kind of salty that I blew I blew a check at the studio because like, yeah. I, at, by the end by the end they were like, yo, like we're not even gonna mix the song like in wow. the studio. You got to pay separately to mix it. And I was like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, that's terrible. Like, trying to get me for an extra $400 at the end of the session. Like, wow. I mean, like, I'm not doing that. So, like, that's why, that's I, like, I'm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got I was you. Gonna say, that's why I feel like my uh, my prices are, are not, I'm not even doing nobody wrong. I'll mix your song <laughs> in the studio, yeah. everything. Like, I'm not trying to charge you $400 for one song. Was it like different? Being in Orlando, do you miss everybody? Is it different? I mean, obviously the studio's setup is crazy different. Yeah, I like my studio here better in Philly, but like I like other studios there in Orlando better than my studio here. And uh, yeah, I miss everybody down there for real. Like I haven't started school yet, so I'm kind of just like doing whatever I want. Like, you know what I mean? Like kind of setting up my crib and uh, just being around, like trying to get, get familiar with the area, familiar with the people. And uh, I mean, honestly, that's just, it feels like a restart. Like, so that's why it kind of sucks. Like, I, I've been up here for so long. Like, everybody knows who I am. Like, I get, yeah. I get money up here. Like, it's, I love it. That's easy. It's cake. I'm comfortable. But in Orlando, I'm out of my comfort because I don't, I don't really know that many people. Like, I know Ravage and Desmond, but like, they, they're out of the way. They're kind of like 30 minutes away. So, like, I'm, we're, I'm pretty much forced to be around, like, trying to meet new people. Like, I'm forced to be back, like, pretty much at starting with music stuff. Like I'm back giving free features out in Orlando, like to people just cause like, wow. I want people, like I need people to understand, like and hear my, like, bro, I know that once people hear my stuff, like they'll know like what it is. So like, if I'm giving out free features, like 
anybody that knows the person that I give out the feature, like they're gonna hear me and they're gonna be like, all right, yo, who's this guy? Like, he's really famous. Like, <laughs> yeah. awesome. But, I mean, that's a good idea. Yeah. So is your roommate like, is he doing music or what? So my roommate like- is actually my blood brother. That's my bro, Chris. Okay. And he is. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, he's my brother, and he he's doing a, a videography at Full Sail. Okay. He's doing directing. Like he did five years in direct, so he's smart as hell. Like I really gotta, I really gotta talk about Chris because he that's my brother. Like I, I I think he's crazy, like crazy smart. And he he uh yeah, so he graduated from Drexel for engineering, and he oh. didn't, he didn't even want to like tap into that. Like he just went straight. He's like, yeah, I want to do like my own thing. Like I want to go to Full Sail. I want to do like video and stuff. Like when I heard that and like he really started getting into it like he's been shooting a lot of stuff for me recently like yeah he's, he's getting better and better like more professional every time so like that's that's just crazy like it was a crazy situation like most people probably look at me like yo what the hell like why is like his brother like going down with him like what's going on here but like no nah, like he's he is certified like he's gonna he's gonna do crazy things with that camera already now awesome but, yeah, man, that's me and him down there turning up a little bit for the eight it's crazy. Yeah, my little brother's my cameraman too. Just use the iPhone right now, but one day it's gonna be better. <laughs> yeah, just keep conditioning and moving on. I'll be able to use the cam. Yeah, sure. Um, so like, what's your future plans? Where do you see yourself in five years, ten years, you know, even one year? Hey man, I can't give up too much, but I do plan to drop an album at some point in the next year. I already dropped the too high up album. That album is slapper, but that's I feel like that that album's gonna be like like an album for real, like true, like yeah. people who heard music like back in the day. Like I'm coming with a whole new vibe. Ever since my last EP that I dropped, like yeah. I'm going more mainstream kind of with the with the rap vibe, like with the all that mainstream stuff. Yeah. My old album, like I feel like, was just more so like if you know who I am, like you know that that was like. That was a sturdy album, but like, this is gonna be uh, the next project I want to do. I want to make it a lot more appealing to like mass audience, like big groups of people. Yeah. And um, besides that, I also wanna in the next two years, I'm gonna be starting my own business back in Philly, hopefully, or maybe elsewhere, depending on the opportunities I see in Orlando. Uh, I'm trying to come start my own studio business again. Always Studios is gonna be retired eventually at some point this year. I'm gonna start my own uh, a fresh studio with all new all new staff, all you know, CEO, everything like yeah. I'm gonna carry. It, so I got some other stuff planned out for sure too. You already know I got my books filled up, but can't give everything away. You see the meeting password for the Zoom? The Zoom what password? Did you see the Zoom password that I put? Yeah, too high up. <laughs> I was like, man, Tasty knows what it is. Oh, well, like while we're on that topic, like can you explain what that means? Like yeah, high so. Up. It's funny because uh, Too High Up, the first time I ever said Too High Up was on Status. I think the song was uh, um, what's the one? Um, I got trust issues from bitches. Trust, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that one. Uh, at the end, I, that's when I said Too High Up. I was freestyling. And like, oh, really? it ended up like resurfacing. Like, Too High Up to me is really just like a vibe. It's like an energy. Like, it's like it doesn't mean any like the collective like what those three words would have meant like by themselves you know what i mean so it's like it's its own thing to me like it's just the vibe because before i ended up taking that and, and putting it before like all of my songs after that like yeah. like at the beginning before it dropped every time i wanted that to hit hard because like something about it like it put me right in the vibe like I, I don't know it was it was really something special for me like and to me like it made me feel like like there's a lot of things that like i would relate as like a too high up type vibe like yeah, so I'm like, if you if you worried about stu- like stupid stuff like that, like you you're not gonna die over this stuff. Like it's just stuff that's like I don't know how to say it. Like I, yeah, I, I, I haven't done that. this is stuff like nobody really gets the full story on stuff like this because also at the same time as well as I have my own ideas of it of how I feel about too high up. Like I want everybody else to have their own perception yeah. of it. So it's like yeah. yeah it's what, Piece of the music it makes it, it makes it a little more impactful. But for me, too, too, I really just a vibe. Like, 
I'm too high up. Like I'm bougie. I'm I'm Hollywood a little bit. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I'm dealing with this and that. That's some too high up like, stuff right there. Like you know what I mean? Because because you, you wouldn't be able to feel me if you weren't too high up. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to feel me. Yeah, you know when he says too high up at the beginning of his song, he's going hard. Yeah, man. I, listen, I haven't even said it in, in front of my more recent songs. I haven't even really said it. I, I've been I've been chilling off it because I feel like I want to bring it back around. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned too high up in one of my songs. I said too high up, like, too high up, like I'm Neeks. Hey, oh, I'm a yeah. pro. <laughs> hey, listen, man, you really putting them bars in. Not a lot of people, not a lot of people get the uh, are gonna know what that means in the future. But like when when I'm really popping stuff off, like, you're gonna know. So that's lit. I had to get the podcast in when you're just starting to pop. So. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You already know. Yeah. Can we throw my my marble folks see this? Yeah, man, it's gonna be crazy. I'm like taking it to a whole new level with music, with this and everything. So I want to see the same people with the millionaire mindset. So I was like, first person I thought of those like Neeks. Oh, you gotta get them in. Yeah. yeah, man. You know the millionaire mindset stuff. The only thing is like I'm sure you know like the more you think about it, the more you actively give yeah. energy to it. Like that's the more likely that the chance is that you're gonna get what you want out of this world. Yeah. You just gotta really invest in yourself and your you gotta invest in your ideas, your anything. You know what I mean? You gotta get to a bag because a lot of people don't even do it. Like a lot of people who really like, like want to want to, they want to have a million dollars. Like they're not doing anything actively to get to a million dollars. Yeah, like it's not gonna come to you. You gotta work for it. It's definitely not gonna just come to you. You need to, uh, you need to get through like a lot. I feel like, yo, I, I feel like. Anybody could really be rich, like or everybody could be rich in this world, bro. Right? For real. there's enough for everybody, but you know, it's, 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 it's um, but all I know is I'm gonna get mine. So listen to that. That's facts. Absolutely. Um, so like, do you have any favorite people to work with? And um, like, what's one like like major artist or like even small artist that you like dream of having a feature on one day? <sighs> Let's see. So some of my favorite people to work with. I do like, like, I have a lot of people that I do love to work with, for sure. Mm. But, like, recently I've been on a lot of independent stuff. I love to work with my manager, RJ. He, mm. he, uh, for my EP, he's part of the reason my, my EP had that mainstream sound, because he's, he's been around, like, he's been to all the clubs, blah, 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 this and that, like, he be guessing and stuff, but whatever. Mm. He knows what, like, a good idea of what, like, regular, like, regular music, like, mainstream sound sounds like so like he's in the studio with me while i'm making these three records like uh co-producing the records like just oh, giving yeah. me corners here and here like and uh just telling me yo you should say this you should say that like just trying to kind of like add to the vibe like switch it up just a little bit and like that that little change like mm. i don't know i feel like he added a lot to my vibe because like he he brought me out of like my own perspective like I'm, I'm only in my own head so like i'm seeing things like how i see him but like he's like yeah like, come on, bring bring this other energy bring come like this use this beat like and then he had me he had me doing some good stuff so most yeah. definitely i love working with rj um as far as like video stuff i love working with bro i love working with louis i got my man drew vernon you know i got my my whole team i got uh Alan, Alan on the camera with the photos. You know he the hottest with that. <laughs> but uh, and then music stuff also though. Like I feel like I haven't really been in, like I haven't been doing features much. Like cause I just want to get my own sound. So like down pat that. Like I can make. I could never do a feature again. Like I don't need. I feel like feature songs are cool because like you can hear yourself with somebody else. But like you need to verify yourself to a point where like you're on a single and it's just you and like it's the hottest song you ever heard like in your life like over over like whatever future like young thug just dropped or whoever like anybody you gotta features aren't even that important until you can get to that point where you make hits that that you know are like yo like this is this is crazy yeah so yeah i was gonna say i was listening to uh to to, uh, hold it and like i literally i swear to god i had it on repeat like i played it like five times in a row I don't know what it was, but like the beat with One Night Only, he went crazy on the melody. It's crazy. Bro, One Night Only is talented. He's coming up to Philly. He's staying in my crib from New York. He's going to okay. stay here uh, one night this week, actually, the following week. But 
he he's so talented, bro. He does a lot of layers on production. He does all all melodies, like original melodies and all types of like his acoustics, his drums, everything is just teed up. Like he's really he's really sturdy. Definitely yeah. really sturdy. But yeah, that record too, like was one night only a lot of times like I'll rearrange the beat like to my own liking. Like I'll take certain parts of the beat and like put them in different places. And like that for that song it made the song because like the beat switches in the hook for the second part when it goes uh um uh what, which part is it on to uh, on the movies i can't even remember the part but you know in the hook when it when it goes halfway through and the beat switches and then the, and then the, the hi-hats come on like and that's, oh yeah yeah crazy. that's um cool. yeah I, I we switched it up to, to have that that was my favorite part of the beat and it was only in there like at the end of the song and i was like yeah take that put it in the beginning like, yeah like why was there yeah like why was there only three songs on that like bill was that like a personal decision was that like management decision like uh it had to do with management and it, it was a personal decision though over everything because like i wanted i dropped too high up which was like a lot of records like and like i want that to get like i wanted that to get love when i dropped it like i didn't really realize what it was like to me now like too high up was still like uh a form of like me experimenting like like learning myself my sound but like that was just my first like step into like understanding who i am as an artist like that's why it's like a significant album to me like um but when i dropped this say some ep i had a certain uh it was all based on like a promotional plan like that was going to benefit all the songs so i dropped them each as a single uh all three of the songs except for hold it which dropped as an EP, but like technically dropped as a single because it's the only song that came out. Uh, yeah, so we did this whole like promo plan with uh, we, we did some Spotify uh, campaigns and like we did a, we did a lot of nice stuff for, for that EP, but it's still running. Like I still want that. I don't want to drop. I'm gonna say this right now. I don't want to drop anything else until that hits at least five hundred thousand streams on that. Like all together collectively like i want at least five hundred thousand. i want a million for real like on the on all three of them like i need five hundred thousand like for real for real. i need it so until then like sorry y'all fans y'all are beat like i'm gonna be making my own stuff and i'm gonna be making money without dropping any music because i need a million on that yeah for sure for sure but i'm not trying to be like you know some type of way greedy nothing but like i've dropped enough music at this point to just know like 100%. like I don't need to drop it. Like, I don't have to. It's not making me money. Like, so if you people really want the songs, like, y'all better work for them. Like, yeah, y'all better give me a million views and then you can have it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. I'm, it's at like 100K right now, so. Good job, man. That's crazy. Trying to expand other. Yeah. Um, trying to expand to other platforms myself. So, working on that. Working on getting the studio. You got to get, you gotta get in the. Uh, on the other platforms. Wait, so have you ever dropped on all platforms before? No, not yet. Only SoundCloud and YouTube. I definitely got to expand on that. You, you, you got to, man. That's part of the, uh, it's part of how you really get a bag on from music. I mean, like, you can't really get that much money from, from streaming. It's yeah. Kind of you yeah. can still get, like, I probably touched, like, $1,000, $1,500 in my oh. career from oh, just really? streams. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like I'm looking back at your like, I like your first songs. Like I didn't get the last part. Trust, trust featuring YKC. Like, do you see like, like improvement and growth like from those songs? Oh my god, yeah. I think that I'm just a completely different person. Like from that time, like I feel as though I just when I started rapping, I was kind of lost. You know what I mean? Like I just love music and I loved everything. Like, but I, in like some kind of weird way, you know what I mean? I found found exactly who I am like through the rap music like and that's why I'm, I'm still doing rap like if I really genuinely didn't think that this was where I belonged at like I'll be doing some soft ass like other single music like myself like but um I definitely did improve from those time periods like at that time like I didn't understand rap really like I just rap like I just like rap music so I did rap stuff but like I feel like like the position I'm in now, like most of the people that support me would never have supported me if my music was still the way that it was at that time. Mm. Like, and that's how I know that I grew. But like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like, cause who cares what anybody thinks? Really? Like, it's all your music. Like, you, 
and you can make music, make artwork, and do whatever you mm. want with that. But like, I definitely, I learned how to make songs that are like good songs, not just like have good lyrics or like have good melodies, like good all around songs. Like, and and learn how to like utilize my voice really well. It's, it's two major things that I think have changed since uh, earlier in my career for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, so like you've been working at this for a while and I'm sure you like think of like future plans and stuff. But, like, is there one major goal that like you have to accomplish like, no matter what it takes? And that's like your defining moment? Um, I need a million streams on my new EP. Yeah. So, you know, run that, run that up for me. Hold it. That's all I'm, I, I focus on goals that are not too crazy. To mm -hmm. reach. Term. And, and I hit them. I mean, I have my goal, which is to get a million dollars before I'm like 30 years old or 25 years old. Like, have a million, be independently wealthy. Like, that's that's just that's everybody's goal, though. So like, I still wake up thinking about that every day for sure. But um, right now, my major goal is just to get get this that uh, EP to a million hits. I'm gonna keep running that up. That's all yeah. I'm worried about. Hundred percent. Um, so like. On social media, like you are posting like a lot on like Instagram and stuff, which looks really cool. But like on TikTok, I've been looking at your stuff and it only has like three videos. So, like, are you trying to expand on that? Because I've seen people who literally get like millions of likes, and, like it changes their life from the music, like PP Cocaine, for example. Yeah. So TikTok is dope. Listen, don't get me wrong. TikTok is dope. But I need, I need my manager to get on that and learn how to use it and and use the algorithm properly because yeah. I don't. I don't, I'm not going to do like some corny TikTok stuff. Like that's not who I am. Like, I mean, maybe if he like, if it's really going to make me like my money, like then maybe I'll do it. But like, it's yeah. got to be like, right. Like I'm not going to go on TikTok and ruin my image for that. Like that's not how it's going to be. But like, but yeah. there's definitely an opportunity in TikTok. Like, because the, the way it works is it puts you in front of, it's basically like free cloud. Like, here you go. Okay. You're in front of millions of people, like for nothing. Like you just pull up. You just on their their explore page, like whatever. Yeah. Like I um. Uh, yeah. Like I use. Let them off, but um. Right now I got like, like four thousand followers. Just at four thousand, and one of my videos just got fifty k likes like a week ago, which is crazy. But like, once you reach ten thousand followers, which is what I'm trying to do, you get put into the creator fund where you get paid money. If you have ten thousand followers for every thousand streams, like it's super easy to do that. Um, I could send you a guy if you want. Like I just watch YouTube videos on the algorithm. However many hashtags to use, how long, what color text, it all comes down to the little things. So you want me to send yeah. it to you? I got you. I got you. Yeah, man, you could definitely send me that for sure. I would appreciate it. I, I think that part of it, part of it too, is like I need, I need uh, real specific content for TikTok. Like I don't feel as though I personally even need to be a TikTok creator. I could have my music promoted through TikTok on other people's like like I had somebody use my song on TikTok that got over a million views before. Wow. But like that helped it helped the song streams on Apple Music and everything. It definitely did. But like um that was feeling good by Lil Haiti. If you looked it up I'm sure it's still yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. Um there was a there's a TikTok up there that over a million. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean that's dope. Like but I don't know. I, I still feel as though like with TikTok it's just it's just hard it's just hard because i need the, the, oh yeah what i was trying to say i need specific like content like i was telling my videographer he's still slacking there if you're learning if you're watching this you gotta send this to me i wanted the uh we paid a, a teaser for the we paid video i did with rari for tiktok like specifically made to fit like the, the screen and everything like would be perfect because on tiktok that would have went up like people would have loved that we, 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 we paid we went crazy on it and, like it was it snap but he fell through on that so like now I'm like, damn. So I do think about TikTok sometimes. Yeah. TikTok is something you should invest in, but really? I'm just I'm just lagging a little bit. Yeah. yeah, that's all good, man. Don't worry about it. Um, so like, as far as music goes, like, what inspires your music? Like, what motivates you to like hop into the studio, or like, what style, what people, like, what motivates you to keep working, and your music in general? Like, where do you get your like style from? Um, see, like I've been. I feel like a lot of, of um, my style, like my style, my sense of style and stuff comes from, I don't know, it's like hard to break it down because like my drip, if you're talking about drip style, like that goes back to like my, my own, like I used to sell clothes and like do all that stuff. Like, but, but the type, like the way that I act and all that, like 
that actually changed. Like, I was not always the way that I am right now. I didn't always talk like this. Like, I kind of have, like, almost, like, a street accent now. Like, it's kind of annoying, you know what I mean? Because, like, I can't really, like, change that. I'll be, like, out somewhere trying to talk to some or teachers or something. You know what I mean? Like, some something like that. And, I'm, I'm like, I'm, per, I'm permanently, like, this is how I talk. Because, like, I've been around for so long. Like, I've been... I mean, awesome. You know what I mean? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Got I don't you. want to say like shit, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it goes without saying. I got you, man. <laughs> but, but um, no, I've seen just like I have a lot of key people that, that inspire me to get to where I am right now, and I feel like right now, like the only thing that inspires me to want to work is myself. Like, like I, I always want to see myself doing better and see myself in a better position. And I know that like sometimes the inspiration for making music for me is like more so out of just like therapeutic uh, therapeutic sense like if i'm upset about something like that's really bothering me and i can't stop thinking about it like or it's, I, I know it's really like bad for me like um i will uh i'll make i'll make records about it like I, it'll, it'll i can listen to it like it feels like it's getting out of my head like just getting the thought out so like that's why it's almost like you had someone to vent to if you don't you know what i mean yeah so exactly that, even when i was by my lonely like i had some I had, a, I had a position in my life when I was down bad on my ass. Like, I didn't have nothing. Uh, I had no friends. Like, not even the boys that I'm around now, I had nobody. And that's when I really connected with music the heaviest because that's when music became therapeutic for me. When I, I was in the crib for months, I had a concussion. Like, I was I was out bad. Like, I couldn't go to school for a couple months. Uh, uh, and I, I couldn't even, like, really leave the crib because, like, lights and shit, all that stuff was bad for my, like, my concussion. But um, I was sitting in the house and, like, I didn't have no one to talk to, and like I started making, I started going harder on my music stuff, and like yeah. trying to put my emotions there, and that it worked. So that's why it stuck with me now. So that's an inspiration for sure. Like put your put your feelings in the music. Like that's the only gonna benefit you even more. And people love that, anyways. Like people love hearing the truth. People love feeling it. Yeah, that's when I started because like I was just like I had suffered a loss in the family, and then like you know I was kind of sad. Obviously, didn't really have many friends. It was middle school, so you know that was already rough in itself, but. Uh, music helped me get out of that too and you know you always write that realist music when it's like when like you know like you can't fake it you know no it's always the authentic authentic stuff that hits um so like going off with that like was there any like ever like setbacks in music where like you were doing good and you just like uh i don't know how to like explain it but like were there any like setbacks that made you discouraged or like anything like that there was plenty of times like there's plenty of times when stuff happened that like almost maybe not like I was never the type to just be like oh I'm gonna quit because like I love music so like there was ne- quitting wasn't an option for me like maybe I would stop posting music but like I would never quit like I would always be making music but I mean I feel like times when it was super discouraging was like obviously times when you're getting a lot of hate like there was times when I was getting all this hate like out of nowhere I'm trying to think when like. Oh yeah, when, I, when we dropped me and me and Dom dropped it on the low video, there's people who were like waiting, put some comments like fake spam accounts, like all these dumbass names, like some, some stupid stuff, like, and it, it was like really making me mad. I was like, yo, like, I'm sorry about that. I was never about to quit, but I was definitely like discouraged. I was like, yeah, we just put like all this money into this all this time, and there's some kids waiting here to comment some stupid ass like nothing, like. Uh, but that's always around. Like you can't, you can't avoid that, like. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of, of uh, some other like discouraging. Like, overall, like you should never let anything discourage you too much. Cause like, if you yeah. enjoy making your music, man, that's all. That's all it needs to be. Um. Oh yeah, there's times when like writer's block or like yeah. that'll get it. That'll get at you, and like you'll start to feel like you're losing touch with your musical like abilities, and like you know what I mean. That comes and goes. Like, I feel like that that comes more in your life when you start chilling out. And yeah. you're not really doing stuff that you have to write about. Like, you're just in the crib. And you're not. You're not about to start writing about. Well, I was watching Netflix today. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But I like the yeah, hate. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was the like, hate. Yeah. The hate and the uh, and the, the the writer's block and like all the block it is. That's really the most discouraging part. I feel like with the music stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I was like a kid from like the county and like. I guess like the suburbs in general writing like clean rap music or like even just writing music in general like for you or like on scoop hall like you're getting hate from because you're from like the suburbs like it's kind of yeah. annoying. like you just can't worry about that stuff i mean you get supporters from the county so 
Oh. Most definitely, bro. And yo, Scoop Hall was hating on the on the Rari we paid video. Yep. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was it was funny, but like the, the majority, the reason why people was hating on that video, bro, it's like it's about what I wanted. Like someone else did a reaction video and said it and made it look a certain way, bro. It made me so confused. Like that's not what it is. Like listen, everybody in Philly does not like the county, bro. Like straight up, like no one likes the county, bro. So like when me and Rari made that catch and we were kind of coming like, coming at people, we said. Uh, um, we over Lil Baby and 42 Doug on some county shit. Like, so, so everyone in the city who like Baby and Doug and doesn't like the county, which is pretty much all of them, like, yeah, they were so soft. There's what? Like, over Doug? Oh, you from the county? You lost me a county. Like, it don't matter, bro. Like, they're always going to hate. And that's why, like, I see mad people commenting too, like, yo, this is why I know nobody likes Philly people, like, cause like y'all like y'all always hate on um, like um and then like yeah, it's like whatever it is, but like, yo, listen. Scoop Hall is like that to, though, bro. Like Scoop Hall, yeah. like you, you never know, man. Like they were trying to get me on some like, yo, you had a hooded, a hooded like t shirt, and I was like, no, nah, like it's not, it's the best. Like it looks yeah. like a hooded t shirt. The best though. Stop playing for me. Yeah, exactly. I'm not drip on point, man. They're the ones like they're commenting, but that's the most that's the biggest thing they're gonna do that day. I mean, we're actually getting out and getting it. So I mean the haters are the people yeah. that are below you hating on the process, but they're not doing close to that, you know. Yeah, bro. Nah, Scoop Hall. I got love for Scoop Hall because like like it's funny. Like I'll be on there watching people comment, hate on like some other stuff that's going on. Not like not like rap music, but like anything like Philly moves, like related with Philly, like popping people in Philly, like this stuff that's going on in the city. Like there's always people from the city commenting in the comment section, like some funny stuff. Like, so that's why I said, I, you, got, you gotta have love for Philly school. When you get hating on though, like the one good thing about it is that like, kind of puts you into perspective. Like you take a step back and like, it's kind of when you find like the real people, you know? Like, for example, like one of my close friends who like used to help me out with my music and my YouTube, he was like, oh, you have no future, you have no real friends. And then, like, I had a lot of people that would, like, back me up, and, like, people that I didn't even talk to on the regular that would, like, back me up. So it's always cool to, like, see who's actually supporting you. Yeah. I'm sure you had that, too. I mean, really, though, like, hatred and hating on stuff, like, comes from, like, fear. Like, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? Because, like, sure. if they didn't, like, if there wasn't some kind of fear with that, like, it's not even that they feared you. Like, they might just be afraid that they're going to be unhappy for the rest of their lives because they're not doing what they want to do type thing. But, like... But um, as long as that, like, if there, if that fear didn't exist, then then they wouldn't take the time, yeah, to, exactly. day to to throw hate. Like, I know plenty of people that don't like stuff that I do, and mm -hmm. they don't, they don't hate, and they, and I don't have a problem with them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, that's totally cool. Like, it's totally chilling. But there's plenty of people that do hate, and that. And that low key will turn around and start bumping and shit, like bumping my yeah, music. Like, exactly. Uh, it's just some some weird like relationship between hatred and uh, fear. Yeah. So people are afraid that people are afraid that they're never gonna get to do the things that they want to do. They're too busy doing the stuff their parents set up for them. For, their for sure. Is oh, everything good? Gonna happen, bro. I would okay. never worry about that. Oh, this is, a, is this the same spot you were in? Yeah. Um. So, like, we just went over setbacks, but, like, what was your first wow moment? Like, wow, I really made it. Like, I can actually do this, like, for a living. Like, I finally am like, at the top. You know, even, even though it was just the top of then, like, not the top now. Yeah. Um. I started feeling like I was the man when I started making money. Like, when I had enough money in my pocket that, like, I like I have a girlfriend and all that, like, when I can start, like, you know what I mean, Just getting a little bit of extra kick throwing her something and, like, buy myself some nice stuff, like, really being able to, like, you know what I mean, be comfortable, like, just based on some studio recording stuff, like, that kind of boosted me because it started refund. it basically started refunding all the money I spent on the studio, like, immediately, like, hundreds of dollars a day because, like, it's 50 hours, it was $50 an hour back at that time when I was, when I was popping a little bit. And uh, yeah, I mean, money was definitely a, uh, like a an inspiration to me to keep going with it. But I just loved it. So like, like I said, like even if I didn't feel as though like I was doing good right now, I'd probably still be in the studio. Like, <laughs> I'd still be trying to work at it. Yeah. Like, what's your like 
your, what's your mindset when you hop in the studio? You ever have a specific goal to accomplish or is it just like you find a beat, you have a set of lyrics? Like what's your mindset when you're going through it? A lot of times I'll just get in here just to vibe. Like a lot of times I won't even expect to make a song and like I'll pull up a beat and I'll just start freestyling and I'll freestyle a song that's fire. Like I don't know, I feel like it, it changes. That that aspect of things changes. Like my vibes in the studio changes yeah. over time for sure. Mm. But it also depends, like being in the studio with other people influences the vibe, like depends on the, the ideas. Like my manager um, wants me to get him to start doing, try some different means of like studio vibes. It's like uh, coming to the studio with like with multiple beats, like with ideas already planned out type thing, like like something like that. That's a different way to look at it in comparison to what I do right now. Just go into the studio, have a bunch of beats, and then just play them. And like, if I like one of them, I'm gonna run into the booth. I'm gonna start freestyling on them, and like, it could be a bang, like just like that. But I mean, yeah, I, I like in this in the studio too. Like freestyle vibes is my that's where I'm at. Like I love freestyle. Sure. Freestyle. Um. So like, you're like obviously very talented with the freestyle. Like, how'd you get so good? Because I'm still trying to like improve on that too. Like, so what's your like main like? I don't know, practice. Bro, all you got to do is put on beats and free stems to start talking, like really getting comfortable with your own voice and like your own like thoughts, like letting your own thoughts just stream out your mouth, like in, in a melodic form, in a melodic sense, like you got to be able to do it. Like, and it's not hard, bro. Like it just takes time. So yeah. like, even my, me and my brother freestyle, he, he doesn't even rap. He knows how to freestyle though. He's been doing it since he was in high school, like just freestyling with his boys and like, I'm, I, almost anybody in my friend group can freestyle. Like, if you ask manager Mike, like, to freestyle, he'll bust down, like, a whole, like, whole song in one, without without stopping one time, he'll freestyle the whole thing. Like, I, even Alan sometimes I got freestyle. Like, I, everybody. Because, like, freestyling is an art form, bro. I think everybody can do it. Like, you just got to get comfortable with what you're saying and, like, not second. Like, you're going to mess up sometimes. It's unavoidable. But, like, don't let the mess up, like, ruin the whole song. Yeah. Take, take that. So like how, how long have you been at this for? Like five years? Four years? I've been at music for six years. Uh, but but um, rap music I've been at for probably three years. Three years. Do you ever take it like, you do always take it serious from the rip or like, were you just like? Mm, not the first song. The first song I made was like a joke. It was like. Was it? Oh, really? I, I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. Oh shit, it might have been four years now, really. I've been doing that music. Yeah, I was in eighth grade. And it was, um, it might have been seventh grade, yo, too. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Like, time goes by fast, but what I do know is it was a diss track on um, this boy in my grade. That's so funny. Like, I, I, it's not, it was nothing in like actual beef. Like, it was just this whole situation, bro. I produced it because I was a, really what happened is it, this, it was with Dom. So, yeah. Dom. Dom and Ross hit me up. They they hadn't even really rapped yet at this time. They were like, "Yo, like, we need you to make this beat for this diss track because like we know that you know how to make beats. Like we know you know how to make like stuff on on Ableton and all that." And I was like, "All right, I could try." So they slid over to my house. This is my first time ever hanging out with like like them. Like actually, no, it's not. I hung out with them before this, but like like we, this was like a whole new start to our friendship. Cause, like this is when me and Drizzy started working back to back and like all around this time period like my studio now like you see all this like all the old studio vibes like whatever it was the same room but like it, it wasn't enclosed like the whole wall that's behind me that wasn't there the door wasn't there like none of these walls were here like none of this desk none of the equipment nothing and uh we started in this room like just messing around on some on some i mean i was making dance music i didn't even know how to make it like a yeah. I tried. Like, it worked and i did it but <laughs> We yeah. dropped it on SoundCloud. We dropped it on SoundCloud and we got like 2,000 views or something. We thought it was hard. We thought we were everything. Like, yo, this is crazy. And then after that, we just kept uh, doing it. I started doing it by myself. And Ross and Dom started doing music together. So, like, that's that's how it originally started. Like, um, and I was just doing my own stuff because I was producing my own stuff and I was recording my own stuff. And, like, you know what I mean? But then eventually, like, Ross, like, ended up kind of slow, like, chilling off the music tip and then like me and Dom started like really working like heavy like going yeah. back and forth so funny because yeah. like the people that dropped this tracks on me I had two drop 
crap on me. But like they're like some of them are like my closest friends now. It's just funny. Yeah. You know? right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, at first it was like annoying, but then I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna listen to it anyway. Like, I'm not gonna give them the satisfaction. I mean, yeah, they're my guys now. Like one just came over to record. You know? So Really? Who was it? His name's Damien. I mean, he was always like nice to me. He never made it like he he wasn't making it to like make me feel bad, but like he's a, I he's, mean I feel like distracts and distracts, bro. Yeah. Like the thing is like that's funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny yeah. that that's still going on. Like that's something. That's a tradition. Like that's been going on forever. Distracts. Like, shit. Time flies, dude. I remember the first time I saw you. You were like, it was at lunchtime, and you came over to our table. You were on the Neeks chain. Then the next day, I was like, I like hit you up on Instagram. And I was like, I think I asked for like a free beat or something. I don't know what I was on back then, but I was like, yo, can I get a free beat or something? And then I was like. That was kind of corny. And then I saw you in the hallway. I was like, yo, it's geeks. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, right. Yo, high school was lit. Like, I can't even cap to you, bro. I can't even lie to you, bro. In high school, I don't even know why I'm trying to pick this up. <laughs> in high school, bro, I had some moments where, like, like, I was, like, I'm still popping. I'm still popping right now. Like, it's lit. But, like, in high school, I had some real popping moments, bro. Like, where, like, <laughs> I'll be out and, like, fans would see me like big fans like in groups of fans like i'll be like oh man like this is bad like even still like not even that long ago i was at like mcdonald's like, spinning a block and like there's some like car full of like fan people that like staring at me they all knew who i was and i was like freaked out i was like yo chill like it zoomed out of that like, yeah like, <laughs> yeah it happens like, these yeah. times at like sports events and stuff with, like games yeah. and stuff. come up yeah. it's like i'm like their old head now you know like they're all yeah. like, they're like the young kids. They're like, but yeah, I'm happy that like I'm able to like inspire the youth and like even inspire my friends. You know, start music. Most definitely, yeah. Most definitely, that's important. I remember I used to like freestyle in the bathroom. I was like, yo, I want to show you my lyrics. Like, I'll get out of science class, go to the bathroom. I'd always catch you there. I don't know why. It was always me and Neeks. Well, yeah. Where was that at? That was at near the math rooms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro, that was the that was a bad. I was in there, yo. So in high school, I was a terrible student. I don't know if you knew this. I was horrible in high school. And that's really because um, I feel like the school like didn't really like want to benefit my situation. Like, like I mean, my situation was this, which is that like I'm not gonna need any of that like stuff that they're talking about. Really, like, like I'm going to a school that doesn't even have like main classes, bro. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Like I was, I didn't even need to do, I didn't even really need to be there for that. So, I mean, there was a lot of times, like, teachers who were, like, being, like, uptight with me about stuff, like, trying to be strict and, like, I was trying to make money, like, in school. Like, I'm, I'm talking to clients on the phone and, like, teachers are like, yo, put your phone away right now. I was like, no, nah, like, I'm not putting my phone yeah. away. Like, I'm, I'm getting calls from Rory, like, in jail, like, and I'm trying to tell my teacher, like, I'm not hanging up on them. Phone. like you can do whatever you want like you can you know what i mean like like try and give me a write-up or something like i'm gonna be on the phone for a minute man. like I'll, I'll go outside if you want like that's how it was but like i don't know like i feel like the last year that i was in high school i just had a lot of like stuff going on besides school that like was more important it really was more important and like i couldn't like i it, it like i don't know it messed me up like i even had an altercation you know winter bottom right it's funny so I had this altercation with him uh, in the senior year where, like, he was trying to, like, he was trying to act like my pops, like my dad or something, like, and uh, he tried to tell me, like, I couldn't leave the room. But I left I left home every single day. I left home every single day, bro, the whole year. And one day he was, like, he had a, he was in a bad mood, so he was, like, yo, like, you can't leave today. Like, I don't know, the principal said something about it. Like, you can't. I knew he was lying about the principal. He was lying. And I was, like, um, I'm leaving, and I just walked straight out. He got so mad at me, like, dude, he, he yeah. and he was like, he was like, you're never like, oh my god, he was being a dick for like a week. I don't know, bro. It was like this whole situation, but like he called my, he tried to call my pops and like, yeah, you know, stuff. I was like, dude, like, you think I can, like, yeah, you, come on, what about like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to hold you, bro, but like, I don't care about being in home room for ten minutes. Like, I, like I'm leaving home. Like, I had some important stuff I had to do, like. I had to go be with my chick, bro. That's part of the whole reason why I was at school in the first place, or else I would have never been there. Like, I never would have been at school. So, like, I was just going to see my chick. I never bothered nobody. Her homeroom teacher didn't care. Like, it was this whole situation. He was being a little bit of a baby about it, but, you know, <laughs> it all ended up working out. Like, I still got love from the school and the bottom and all that. 
How's Rory doing? Is he good? I know he's been out for a little bit. Um, yeah, for... man, he's out. He's good, though. He's good right now. I mean, I'm just praying. I'm just praying that uh, his ass stays smart while I'm in Orlando because I need him to be ready. And I'm yeah. going to go when I get back. Mm. Is there anything serious that he's locked up for? Or, like, I want to talk about it. Like, I don't care if you but don't want to get into it. I mean, that's that's more his stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, more his, like, yeah. you know, I mean, it's his information that to, to share whenever he's ready for that. Yeah. But mm. I mean, there's some there's some like stuff that definitely was more serious that he, he's. I mean, really, like the first time that he spent a lot of time in there, like during the year when I was a senior, like it was on some, like it wasn't right. Like it wasn't supposed to be like that. Like he was only supposed to be in there for like a short time and ended up holding him for a very long time. Like which is which was like depressing as hell. But I mean, he's really like, listen, I could say over everything, like even him being in and out like that, like he's a sturdy, a thorough guy. Like it's not even that he's like out here doing, he just has like a history of like being like, even from when he was a young boy, like around. So like, yeah. that's just, that's all it is, man. Like he's, he's a great dude for me. I gotta promise you that you don't, you know, get in trouble in Orlando or in Philly. I gotta keep you out. Hey, man. Hey man, Orlando is far from the trouble. Philly's where it's at for trouble. If you want to get in trouble, <laughs> I'm always like every day. Like I don't want none of my like none of like my mentors to be locked up or like anybody that I'm hey, close man. with. So I'm like, yeah, I'm praying for you. So the only reason I get locked up is if someone does me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Feel that? I ain't going nowhere. So hopefully, we, at some point, man. I got work and everything because I'm trying to chase a bag from there, but. Um, Got to, man, for sure. For um, sure, for sure. So, like, um, what's your, like, writing recording process? How long does it take? What, like, what are you thinking about? What's the step-by-step, -step, if you have one? Um, as far as recording, I feel like the longest process, the part of the recording process is probably, like, the mix and mastering part. That can take, like, that can take upwards of 20 hours. Like, they're just listening straight, like, over different periods of uh, time. But... Uh, the whole to make a whole record like for me that's drop ready would probably take like of just time invested, not like like three separate days, like probably like, three days of like in in time, like in hours of like listening, like recording and, and production, and like getting it, you know, all that stuff, like all that stuff, making sure it's perfect. Like it probably would take a lot of time. It might it might be less than that. It might be like a day and a half's worth. Like yeah. Uh, 36 hours type situation yeah but it's definitely a lot of like me sitting here with the headphones on just trying to change something like this much like for so long yeah it's always like a hassle even if you got like a like i remember you were telling me like if you got a new cable for your setup it's always like crazy hard and you have to go through so much yo, stuff it's all computers equipment anything equipment yo forget about it Right, you remember that? Yeah, I'm not that tech savvy, so like when I see all these like gadgets and gadgets, I'm like, this is not like what I can do. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's definitely not. It's annoying. It's annoying as hell. I'm actually thinking about getting into production and like an FL and all that. Like, yeah, I was telling one of my friends, and he was like, oh, like you know, you're copying off of people, like not you, but like people around here. And I was like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm doing my own thing, you know. But. Um, what do you mean like, copying on people? What? How would that be copying? Exactly. Like, like I feel like people get it wrong. Like they get it twisted when I say like, "Yo, I'm inspired by you." Like, like yo, I'm inspired by Neek for music. But like, that doesn't mean I'm copying him. Like, that doesn't mean I'm going word for word off of what he says. Like, stealing his lyrics and all that. Because people were saying like, "Oh, I'm stealing Neeks and Jersey's lyrics." Like all that. Like, post on their private stories and stuff. But like, I do my own yeah, thing. Bro. Here's this. Listen to this. All you gotta do is say they're not important. Cause listen. I personally, as an artist, know that anybody, anytime I drop a song, anybody could steal it and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. If they could steal it and make it better, then they're better than me. Like, that's just how it yeah, is. Yeah. So they're like, shit. But, um, like, that's not, there's, like, art isn't about stealing or nothing like that. Like, Absolutely. once you put a flow out there, it's out there, bro. Like, no matter what, I've seen people steal my flows. I remember I used to get upset, bro. I used to get upset when people would be inspired by my music. And that's really what it is. People get inspired by your stuff. And, subconsciously your flows are going to come that's why you can't post no snippets like i had people who trying to leak my stuff like trying to like make songs like my unreleased songs like no that did happen cut that we don't yeah. need that we don't need that at all i remember two of your songs got leaked one time back in like yeah that's cool. that's yeah me and dom me and dom stuff 
one of them was good. I forget which one, but yeah. Like, did you like send it to somebody and it got released, or did someone hack in? I think uh, one of them we recorded, we out recorded out of a different studio, and then the other one, like I don't know, bro. I feel like it could have easily been like somebody like in the circle trying to get some like some type of weird like you know situation going. I don't know. Maybe oh, somebody yeah. wasn't killing us. We just wanted to try and kill the vibes. Who knows? Um, yeah, bro. Well, like, yeah. So like you're going. I mean, you're in college now, starting college up. Like, like for your your plans, like. Where do you plan to live? Like, where are you placing your mansion? You gonna have some kids or? Hey man, I want make kids. I want kids right now. Really? Can't even you lie, be a dad I'm, right now? I'm not gonna be having. I'm not gonna be a dad right now. I'm not. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, unfortunately. But I wish I could be. Um, it's really Rory's fault for having some cute ass little kids. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got two. Got some kids. I mean, it's fucking baby sick, but. Um, I want to have a mansion. I definitely want to have a mansion in Philly, mm -hmm. like around here. I love the city. I love it. it. Just gives me vibes driving through, like around here. That's where I grew up and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, who knows? My bro, my bro might stay out in Orlando. So if he does, I would consider getting a place out there too, because he probably has some kind of big move situation going on out there with entertainment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um. And I mean, I would say I want to play some Cali, but I don't really like the laws out there. I think it's too, but so uh, I don't know. We'll see. Like, yeah. There's a lot of restrictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So like, I mean, like you named this your studio like Oh Eight Studios after the county. Like you give back. Like you've been tell you told me like a bunch of times. Like I want to give back. Like you mentor people, like including myself. And when I met you, I like I didn't know it would turn to something like this. Like I could never picture us like doing this. Like. I were like really close. Like I consider you like a close friend, like a almost like an older brother kind of. So like, Most definitely, right? like, like you always like. So like, did you always want to give back, or were you kind of realizing like you know like the county kind of gave you a lot, so you want to give back, or like, like is there anything special to it, or like? In my mind, I look at it like this: like I don't think the county specifically blessed me. Like I think that I'm blessed to be in the county. Like the county is dope. Like I'm putting on for the county for a reason that's different than I think anybody else, and which is that like, I just want people to see like, that where I'm coming from is different, like from other people, like, like not a lot of people are gonna do it the way I'm gonna do it coming from the county. Like, and I'm not saying that nobody can do it from the county, because you can do whatever you want in the world, but like, not a lot of people can do it the way that I'm doing it coming out of the county, like, which is, it's thorough. Like I'm doing some real thorough, like rap, like I'm rapping, I'm around like, bro, people that you would never believe like are, are banging with my music like as a kid coming from Bruma or coming from you know I mean Delaware County whatever it is like county in the city like banging out with like gangsters like real gangsters that like do real music make real money like they're really about the life that like all that stuff like they're you know what I mean you would be surprised to see the way that, that, that those kind of people like have have like feelings for the music and that's something that like, like even Rari says to me he's like yo for coming out of like where you're from like you you are like something different like a different a different weapon for real like but i mean the county's lit because like i feel like i was blessed to be put in the county like the county's more of just like where we ended up like there was a lot of talented people in the county but it's not the county that gave us the talent like we were just Man. all blessed to be put, put around like this and uh we need a couple more blessings so we can get some money yeah. right yeah i mean i think it's a personal thing though like you helping other people out like it's just like you as a person you know like yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, another part of that has to do with because Josh Moonshine was like a mentor to me when I was younger. Like I told you about that. He was an artist and all that. The spray paint artist. He told me about all that. That I kind of like to have like a similar effect on as many other people's lives as I can because I know that he dramatically changed my life forever. If it wasn't for him doing that, I wouldn't be where I am right now at all. And this is my whole life. So, so yeah. that's why I try to. Uh, I try to kind of do the same thing and bring that same energy back around and, and, and you know what I mean? I don't know. Get other people as excited as me. Yeah. I don't know whether you saw something in the mirror. It was like, man, this young boy keeps hitting me up. <laughs> yeah, I hit you up too many times. You're like, coming back. But yeah, you helped me out a lot. Wait, what happened? Like, uh, like, I don't know if you were just like, because I remember I used to hit you up a lot. Like, like whether it was just like I had a question or like I was trying to talk to you or whatever. Because like, like, you were like a cool dude. Like, I didn't know like there was any other rappers in the county. So like, when I, you told me that like, like, I remember you sent me a video on Instagram and, like, if you, like, listen to, like, one of my old songs, and I was like, yeah, this is crazy. So, like, probably just hit you up a lot, and you're just like, you know, I want to text this kid back. 
No, well, I was really, I'm really busy too. Like, it's another thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I was never like, you know, like this kid's like some weird ass. Yeah, like, yeah. I, what I was like probably doing was like, there's probably like 30 people in my DMs all trying to get studio time. Like, yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. do all this other stuff. Yeah, I got I'm you. like, yeah, I like this young boy that's doing music <laughs> at my school. He's cool, but he got, he got a ways to go. He got to keep turning up for me. He got to keep doing that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, um, let's lay one on. Um, I forget what I was gonna say, but I'm, my bad. <laughs> are you good, dude? Cool. Are you working on something right now? Yeah, I got some uh, some new projects I just started last night. Got some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple of records I recorded out in Florida. Any different? Like, is it like better in Florida? Is it more exciting in just Florida? Different. Just different, not not better, more exciting. Just a whole different vibe for real. It's dope though. It's dope to see a different vibe. Like it, it's definitely yeah. <laughs> Excited to see that in myself because I'm I've been in Philly forever making music. Like yeah, I got uh, different vibes when I went out to Cali and, and did stuff too. Every other state, pretty much, you get different vibes. Um, it's different studio, for real, for real. We already like touched upon your fashion a little bit, so I just wanted to like quickly go over that. Like, who inspires your fashion? Because like, I remember seeing like, I saw you at school one day wearing like Balenciaga, and then you came to my basketball like for uh, for Drizzy, and uh, you were wearing a completely different outfit, which is crazy. What inspires your fashion? When was that? When was that? That was a. Uh, it was for winter basketball. Luckily, I was playing Drizzy's team. Oh, like, yeah. I just happened to see you were sitting on my bench. With a uh, Tidge and uh, Houston. Yeah, so really, uh, my fashion, like I, I don't know. I feel like part of my whole image and my like everything is my drip. Like that's yeah. just part of the way for me. Like, cause I've been on drip before I made music. Like it's just mm-hmm. part of my whole vibe, my image. I don't think it's for, for everybody. I don't think everybody needs to have them Balenciagas and all that expensive stuff. Like I've been doing that before I did rap. Like that's why I just love that stuff. Like. But you know, recently, let me tell you this about my fashion sense, and like this is something I want to stick with everybody when I leave this this podcast, which is that I stopped really buying designer stuff. I'm sure y'all seen me chill. I mean, I still got drip, I still got all this whatever. But what I've been buying now is diamonds, real diamonds, and y'all can test my diamonds. And I'm gonna start bringing a diamond tester to the eight. So next time somebody wants to pull out with some fake chains or some fake this and that. I'm really going to start exposing people. Because, yo, listen, I used to wear fake chains in high school, yo. And the reason why I wore fake chains is because there was no one else that, around me to test them. So I'm going to be that boy for y'all that, that's going to make sure that y'all are uh, <laughs> keeping, keeping stuff right. Because now that I got real real diamonds on me in my ears, yeah, real stones in my ears, real stones in my ring, I don't need, I don't need no uh, no fake stuff. You know, that's the trip. Like, for, me, for me, that's the investment. Like, because now, like, when you start buying real diamonds, like, that's money that's never going to go away. Like, like. The, the, when you get designer clothes, that's that's gonna be garbage eventually. The diamonds are not going nowhere. Are you gonna like invest in the stock market at all, or? You yeah, I do have. I, I want to invest in. Uh, I want to. I don't want to give away too much like money, but like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff, But like, I definitely want to invest. Like, once I get. Uh, yeah, but, like, I have a certain goal that I want to get to, and then once I get to that goal, that's when from there I'm gonna start investing into a certain, uh, certain means of of. Uh, making money over time mm. you know what i mean like passive income huh? what like passive income you mean so like yeah yeah i mean like um i'll probably get into some kind of like real estate or like mm. yeah absolutely like um just just something something that i don't have to really be too hands-on with that i can have other people touching up on and, and i can just be getting money yeah. there's a lot of ways to get money man listen yeah, dude, yeah, there is. Right. It's, it's crazy now. What's up, yeah. though? You be investing a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'm getting into it a little bit. Uh, I'm under the age of 18, obviously. I'm not able to do it, like, legally, but I'm going to open, like, a custodial account so, like, my parent can, like, run it, but I still own it. So it's kind of like a loophole, but it's, like, legal. So I can start investing. And I'm investing in, like, sports cards and stuff because, um, like, like, rookie cards, like, they jump into, like, $2,000 you know, from like 400. So it's just, like, I don't know if you watch Gary Vee, but like, that's what, so, yeah. Watch what? Gary Vee, Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh yeah, I know Gary Vee, I know Gary Vee, he's tough. 
Um, are you getting any more like tattoos? This is kind of like a little bit of fashion. Like, I know you got the one too high up on your arm. Like, you get any more? Yeah. You sticking with that? Like, I want to get a lot more. I want to sleeve up. I mean, hell, man. Hey, listen, and give it, give it a year. You might see me with face tats, bro. It's possible. It's easy That's... possibly in the face tats in a year, bro. But it depends on the situation. <laughs> I need a, to have a lot of money first. That's a huge decision, but I know for sure. Well, like, here's the thing. What? I'm saying like that's your decision, man. If you want to do that, if you like oh, it, no, that's all. For sure. for sure, bro. I mean, to me, it's like this. Like, this is the prime of my life. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm looking forward to being older and all that too. Like, and having a family and stuff like that. Like, that's that's gonna be dope. But like right now, like I'm trying to enforce like. It really depends on my situation, bro. It really does. Because if my, like, I don't see myself ever being in a job where having face tattoos would be a problem. You know what I mean? Let me just say that. Like, off the rip. I mean, yeah, it could be like, all right, I'm at family events and I got tattoos on my face. Like, but here's the other thing. Like, my family already knows who I am. Like, I'm going to already have all these tattoos. Like, there's a lot of ways to break it down and, like, chop it up, look yeah. at it. But I, I don't know. I, I think that if I really am straight, like, if I'm getting money, in a year and i'm i'm still trying to get this this image worked up like i'm still trying to get people to like my songs like that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna end up with some of my like shit i'm up here down here like, yeah man sure um no, he's got his face tattooed he's got it right here yeah um so like and we're probably about to wrap it up like soon within like a couple minutes but i just wanted to ask you so like if you had like um uh, like if you had somebody in, like that wanted to be in your position like Want to do like your career path, like well, I guess like our career path kind of too. Like, what was what would be your advice to them? Like, you know, what would you say to them, and what's the, like the process? Um, I would say this: I would never like I could see what, why I would inspire somebody, but I wouldn't want somebody to want to be like where I am. Like, I would want somebody to like the best way to get somewhere for yourself is to like envision envision where you see yourself being better like and make that the reality like of what the situation is you know what i mean like you can become the best version of yourself you're not that far away from it like every day you wake up and you and you act a certain way and like why do you do that because that's how you've been doing it like you know what i mean but like you could you could just be that you have to do it differently in order to be the better like version of yourself whatever but um i would never say like yo like here's how you get like me it's like because to be honest, no, I don't think anyone will be able to get like me. It's like, I'm, I'm in my own lane. I'm in my own vibe. Like, I'm mm -hmm. doing this. But I, I think that there's a lot to be learned from me getting here. Like, to where I am like that could be beneficial to, like, anybody who wants to come up and, like, do something, like, with their music career. And, and, and one of the big, again, another big pointer that I would say to somebody who wants to, you know what I mean, get themselves up, not just like me, to get themselves up, like, is just never lose focus, never, never lose hope. Yeah. And just keep it going because, you know, eventually that's it's going to catch up with you. Eventually it's going to catch up. Right, like every, everybody's always so quick to make excuses like, oh, I don't have a good financial situation or I live in an area that's, like, not good. But, like, it's all about mindset. Like, literally anybody can be anywhere and do anything. Like, you're literally proving them wrong. Yeah. I'm proving them wrong, too. Like, you know, like, I don't have any excuses anymore. I used to make excuses, you know, but, like, now I'm, like, following my dreams. And, like, I don't really care what people say, whether it's family, friends, you know. And you're doing it too, man. Sure, bro. I mean, hey, man, this whole world, everything in the world is about, you know what I mean, a journey to understand it, bro. And that's why uh, that's why this is one of the most important art forms in the world because it's a way for people to connect with each other. And, I mean, we're doing it the right way, bro. But what can I say? Absolutely. We're not trying to do it for a cloud. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're definitely a person. I said this in my prior interview, but like, you're definitely a person who, like, even if you had like zero followers, I feel like you'd still do music, like, just because you love it that much. It's really oh, respectful. Man. For sure, bro. For sure. Even if I was in isolation, I was by myself, I'd be doing music every day in my life. For sure, for sure. But here's the thing, like, in my mind, like, I see it like this, like, I don't need to blow up off music. Like, I don't need to. I think I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get rich regardless of what I do. Yeah, and if that. I get rich, if I get rich before I blow up, then I'm never gonna drop my music. Like I'm just gonna make music that I yeah. never drop. That's really good sure. music. Like no one's gonna yeah. get to hear it. And that 
because that would be the world's fault for not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah I got you, dude. That would be the world's fault because I really genuinely believe, bro, like, my music, like, I'm on to something, like, different that no one's ever did, like, no one's ever did, bro. It's just facts. Exactly. Exactly. It's just facts. Is there, like, any questions that I, that we didn't, that you wanted to touch upon? Like, like, anything, literally. Like, uh, man. Uh, any, anything you got left to say is all I need, all I got to cover for you, man. I, I had to pop out for, for the Tasty Show and all that. I hope I wasn't too much of a hassle. I know I was texting a lot, but I want to make sure I had this locked in. I got some other stuff. Nah, you're good, man. You're good. I appreciate you for having me. Last thing I would want to say is the, that y'all got to keep streaming up, that, uh, streaming up that EP that I just dropped. I know y'all love that. Yeah. Uh, you, I want y'all to tell me your favorite record. What's your favorite on there, bro, by the way? I'm gonna Hold it by far. By far. Which one? Hold it. Hold it. The newest oh, one, yeah. Hold it's a banger. Listen, hold it's a banger. I couldn't decide. Like me personally, I would not be able to decide what my favorite one is. Like rubber bands is a hit to me. Like rubber bands is a yeah. huge hit. Like, you got club yeah. Band. But, yeah, yeah, I want to hear. What did you say? Yeah, I, I was just gonna say I want to hear what what uh, all these podcast people think about that EP too, man. So they gotta go yeah. run it up. Put that Comment that. Yeah. yeah. Um. You got any songs of mine that you like? I don't know, you might not listen to too much, but I got like an album coming out soon, so anyone's either. Yeah. Um wait, what did you say? My bad. Then, like you, you got any songs in mind that you think like are good style or whatever? Even like I don't oh, really what, care. Of, your, of, of your stuff? Yeah. I yeah, let from. me um I think one of my favorite ones that you released was like let me see which one it was. I don't remember by name, but yeah. let me pull it up. You sent me a record one time. It's, it's my messages. You can open it up from your computer. No, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna open up your YouTube because I know that. Yeah. Man. Wait, this isn't you, right? Throw it up. Is that you? No. Oh my God! There's a there's a new rapper named Big Tasty that dropped the video a week ago. Oh hey, bro, what? <laughs> you gotta check it out, man. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> He's like, man. Oh, yeah, man. So you were kind of like a legendary little rap young youngin when you first came in with Lud with the record with mm -hmm. Lud off the of rip. Like you yeah. were so young for that dude. He's old as hell. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, I didn't have a beard or nothing. Now I'm a little. I'm a little older. Let me see this man. Basically, that he bossed up, and know he said he went in. He was working, but now he's in Germany. Hey, man, now. I like that one. Let me see this. That was Callback. Oh, yeah, Callback. Yeah. Come on, Tasty. Everybody stands like a lucky man now. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, is yeah. this is when your auto-tune, this is when your auto-tune started getting better, when you started working yeah. on stuff like that. But you do still got to work on your mixing, like, that stuff that's going to get better over time, like, what like I'm saying, but, like, you're definitely like your improvements are all in like your flows. Like, yeah, your flows are solid. Like, you got some good stuff going, bro. It's almost like some little tech vibes on this. Like, something. yeah, dude, that's what I go for. Appreciate that. But yeah, I remember you know like, I mean? yeah, I was like, bro, the only thing I would say is really manipulate the way that you talk when you're yeah. recording. Like, can you hear yourself live? Mm, yeah. yeah. So, like, like keep recording the song over. And like, I would say one thing that would help you a lot is if you, like, when you write a song, sing that song word for word for word the whole thing back to back like 25 to 30 maybe even more times before you actually record it so that you can know exactly how you want to say every word yeah. and it comes yeah. out like really confidently because you already know what you're going to say like yeah yeah like, it's actually good yeah i remember like i dm'd you and i was like i was like listen to stay awake and i was like yo what does what does i'm fated get me off the ace of spades mean you remember that yeah. <laughs> ace of spades and i was like I don't even, yeah, but I was, I was on some shit, cause, like, I never even really drank Ace of Spades like that at that time, so, like, I was just drinking, like, anything, and I was just like, yo, it's wrong. But, yeah, bro, that's pretty much the end. Uh, you got anything else to say? A lot of people. Nah, man, I appreciate you for having me on today, man. You know what I mean? You better stay safe and keep keep doing your thing, and, like, everybody else, everybody else will watch, and I hope y'all have a, a positive uh, vibe today and all that. Get, get this money. Yeah. Stay focused. On the M. That's all. Of course. Before we you know, move. Neek's, yeah. Neek's popping on that. Hold it. This and that. Yeah, of course. Um, before we leave, everybody follow Neeks at that's Neeks on Instagram. Uh, I really wish I could have said goodbye to you for the last time, but I haven't seen you since March. We didn't really know what was going to happen since COVID. So 
I'm hoping eventually we can link up. Yeah. Shout out to Neek. Thank you for everything you do for me. Uh, I'm thankful for you and all that stuff you did for me every day, whether I don't tell you or I don't seem like it. But No problem, buddy. I got you. No, no cap. You be um, safe. Yeah, man. You stay safe. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode. Later. See you, Neeks. Yeah.